morning, everyone. Welcome again to worship. Welcome to our gatherings, the body of Christ. Those of you joining us on Facebook Live, we're glad you're with us as well. Our readings this morning are from Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 14, as well as the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 12, 1 through 6. In Jesus' day, the central point for all things pertaining to faith was the temple found in Jerusalem. It's where worship happened and where the different festivals were celebrated. Different forms of sacrifice were performed so that different kinds of sin would be forgiven by God. A couple of months ago, we talked about the, the Temple of Dead, specifically the, the Holy of Holies that was found inside the temple. It's a bit of a room inside a room inside of a room. It was a room that was surrounded by a curtain to create a barrier between that holy of holies and everything and everyone that was outside. In the early days, before the Babylonians came in and trashed the place, the tablets of the Ten Commandments were stored in that Ark of the Covenant. That's what it's used for. It was a holy and sacred place. It's the place where the temple high priest would come in enter into the presence of God and offer sacrifice on behalf of himself and all the people so that everyone could be forgiven. I read it a couple places this week and I, I find it a little interesting, a little tangent side note here, that if the uh, high priest went in to the presence of God and had a sinful thought at that moment or in that time period, that he and everyone else would be destroyed. Now think about that for a minute. You find yourself in the presence of God, and you can't have a sinful thought for an hour or so, lest everyone be destroyed because of you. But no pressure, no worries. Good luck with that. Anyways, it, it truly was a sacred space. It, it, it served a, a special kind of function for faithful Jewish people. It was where the presence of God was found, and from that presence was found forgiveness. Not an inconsequential thing, really. It was a place that was so holy that it contained a holy God's presence, and it required a barrier that curtain I mentioned earlier, to separate a holy God from an unholy people. Think about that. A barrier to separate a holy God and unholy people. A barrier between God and us. Between God and you. An understanding of God that requires a barrier be between you and God. That's a concept that I struggle with just a little bit. The idea that there would need to be a barrier between me and God is a little difficult to comprehend. And it's also not what God's ultimate desire for each of us looks like. Since the beginning of creation, God has been been present with all of creation. That means us. God hasn't put up any barriers to keep us away. God keeps trying and keeps trying to stay connected with God's children. Unfortunately, the difficulty is we're problem children. We keep putting up barriers to separate ourselves from God. We can look at the temple in Jerusalem and snicker a little bit about the idea of there being a physical barrier to separate the people from a holy God. But in our, in our hearts, are we that much different? Are we that much smarter? Are we that much wiser? Are we so much better that we don't put up our own barriers between ourselves and God, even when those barriers are unseen and unspoken? That's the trouble with people. We have a tendency to put our trust first and foremost into, into ourselves rather than trusting unto God first and foremost. Sometimes we close the door quietly to keep God in the other room, and other times we just slam the door. But I'm God. Really? What kind of sense does that make? 
Well, the answer to that is not mine, but we do it far too often. We may not like to think about it, and we certainly hate to admit it, but that doesn't make it less true. The hard question to ask is, why are we slamming the door? Usually we slam doors because we're angry, and we want nothing to do with whoever made us angry. Anybody slam a door in their life? It's kind of satisfying, isn't it? it? Makes us feel better. And that can be God on occasion that we slam those doors. Mostly do it, we do it because we're out of control in a situation, and we don't know what to do. And so that slamming door makes us feel bad. It makes us feel like we're in control of some sort. Someday maybe we'll understand that we really aren't in control. God is. It's just how it works. The difficulty for us is grasping the idea that God is in control. We like to put God in that box. Anybody not have an Amazon box somewhere in the house? It's embarrassing. We like to put God in that box. And then we tape it up tightly so that we can keep God in there until such time that we are in need of God. We open it up. Merry Christmas. Here's God. <laughs> that's not how it works, though we convince ourselves that's how it works. And recognizing that God is in control and taking a step further, we can trust God. Once we put our trust in God, we no longer need to slam the door until that time. And fortunately for us, God doesn't need and certainly doesn't want any barriers between us. We can slam the door all we want, but God is going to be right there with us. And we know this because of Christ Jesus and the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and the assurance of eternal life. That barrier has been taken down. The barrier we put up between God and ourselves is permanently broken apart. The curtain is torn. When we slam that door, when we slam the door on God, it's like God just makes the door bang right open again. Thank God for that. Amen. Question, please stand as you are comfortable and able to continue worshiping songs.